Hi, this is Gideon Burton. I'd like to introduce my students and anyone else who's interested to a great research tool called Digo. Digo, spelled D-I-I-G-O, is a social bookmarking tool and it solves a problem that we often have when we're searching the internet. How do you find things again after you've, you know, been surfing around a lot of different places? It also does some other things besides that, but that that's where it all starts. It's a, a great research tool for gathering information on a given topic and being able to find it again, especially if you move around from machine to different machine. Let me show you an example of what I mean by that. A student recently referred me to this website, which is um, a website about someone who has done illustrations based on Shakespeare's plays. Well, that's something that I'd like to remember for my Shakespeare courses that I teach. So what I do is I click on the blue Digo icon, which is a, a Google Chrome extension that I've put up here. I click on that, and then I click on bookmark, and then I can tag this. And so I'm going to put in Shakespeare, and I'm going to put in illustration, maybe visual. Um, and that's probably good. If I wanted to, I can annotate this by putting in um, anything that might be helpful to myself or to others who, with whom I'd share this bookmark. And then I just click, click on Save. If I wanted to, I could edit the title of the bookmark. Okay. Now once I've done that, if I go to my, my Digo library, which I can do just by typing in Digo if I'm logged in, you'll see that this bookmark appears right there along with its various tags. Now those tags are linkable within Digo so if I wanted to look at everything that I had tagged with Shakespeare click on that and it, it brings up lots of bookmarks I've done in the past that are based on that. I could also have simply typed it in up here. So that is great because I, I often do research from different machines and uh, but Digo is in the cloud and as long as I log into Digo then I can save bookmarks there and, and find them later. Now one of the great things about Digo also is that you can then share these in a couple of different ways. One is if you join a group. So I, I'm the member of a number of different groups on Digo. One of these groups is one I've made called Engaging Shakespeare. And so you can see I've, I've created and, and shared a bunch of links within this group. And so in the future if I wanted to I can share something. I'm going to go back to this bookmark that I just did. I can edit it. If I click on the bookmark tag, this gives me the option to share to a group. So I can go down and click on Engaging Shakespeare, and I, I click on that, and it will then save it to that group. So I'm just refreshing right now, and There it is. So now this is not just saved for me to refer to later, but it's available to other people who may be subscribed to the Engaging Shakespeare group. And that's something that you can do in Digo, is you can subscribe to all kinds of different groups. When you do that, you have the option of getting alerts based on the different um, frequency of, of when the people publish bookmarks to that particular group. Uh, that could be immediately or daily or weekly or you turn off the alerts if they bu bug you. Um, once a week I get a lot of bookmarks in an email through um, for, for a number of different Digo bookmark groups that I'm part of. And uh, so it's a great way for me to consume information there from other people that are sharing it with me. Uh, there's another way to share your bookmarks socially besides just to a Digo group and that is by creating a widget. So this is my Shakespeare blog and you'll see over on this this side that I have installed this widget and these are Digo bookmarks from Engaging Shakespeare. You will see um, you know the most recent bookmarks that I've made in Digo or that anyone has made in the Engaging Shakespeare group will come up right here and so that helps to to broaden the, the reach of the social bookmarking outside of Digo itself. 
There are other features that are available in Digo. I think it's a great tool for collaboration. It's also a, a good tool for social discovery to link up with other people that, that are interested in the same topics that you are. And much of this can be found if you go to the uh, Digo tour, and here's the URL for that, and, uh, or you can just go to help.digo.com and you can learn a lot more about how to use Digo. If you are someone who uses Google Reader as a way of consuming your information like reading blogs or what have you, um, if you go to a specific group, you can find its RSS feed using the RSS feed symbol right here and then use that. That's actually what I use to create the widget over here in this other blog. But I can use that same RSS feed and plug that into Google Reader and then I, I get um, bookmarks coming to me through my Google Reader. So anyway, those are some great ways of using Digo for, for uh, social bookmarking. There are other good social bookmarking services. Uh, StumbleUpon has its own advantages and Delicious also is very popular. But uh, Digo is one that's been uh, very good, particularly for people in the educational area.